wasn't a bad little game last night in Edmonton, huh? Some pretty entertaining. Fair number of goals scored back and forth pretty much right through to the end. Saw a team blow a two-goal lead. Saw another one sit stoutly on the late lead that they got. And and, and it, it does kind of look the same, doesn't it? Good morning to you. Good Tuesday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports, and this is Daily Shot of Penguins. It comes your way bright and early every weekday if you're into football and or baseball. I also offer Daily Shots of Steelers and Pirates in the same place that you found this. Stars 5, Oilers 3, by the way, in that game in Northern Alberta. Dallas takes a 2-1 series lead in the other conference. The Rangers have a 2-1 series lead on the Panthers. And if it weren't for the Florida team competing with a, a palpable edge to the way that they play, you would be witnessing a whole lot of hockey that across the scope of the sport looks very similar. And here's what I mean when I say that. I'm going to give you just a visual example of nothing in particular. Just picture sitting at PPG Paints Arena watching the Penguins play whoever. A puck comes your way, 50-50 puck, okay? It comes against the near boards. And you see a penguin and uh, whoever. It could be anybody, some blue jacket guy, right? And they're coming in your direction. Will they make contact with the glass? Answer that quickly without thinking about it. No, they won't, of course. Will they make contact with each other? Yes, but only for body positioning, only to angle the other guy out or to try to reach under his stick. One of those two is going to get there first, even if it's just by a hair. And they're going to get that puck and they're going to spin away. And the other person will have lost a puck battle that never really happened because I can't call that a battle. That, my friends, is the NHL in the year 2024. It just is. You can take that as if it sounds like somebody who's just longing for the past, just to long for the past, or you can take it from possibly an enlightened perspective that maybe it would behoove somebody, even though I don't believe for a split second that it would be Mike Sullivan's Penguins, to zag while everybody else zigs. This episode is brought to you by Bet Online, your number one source for all your summer sports needs this season, from Major League Baseball, golf, NHL, NBA playoffs. Get the latest odds and lines, including all team matchups, player props, odds on just about everything that's out there. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to get in on the action. Bet Online, where the game starts. Hear me out on this. Think back to 2016. What did the Penguins do that had the entire league just floored? Yeah, they, they, they replaced almost all of their guys who weren't fast with people who were exceptionally fast, like Carl Hagelin fast. And they ended up being able to get to every puck before everybody else did. So even when they got to the playoffs and they had teams that were trying to beat them up, hurt them, or in the Capitals' case, kill them, they just kept getting to pucks first and making things happen. They would run up massive shot attempt differences, massive, like double, triple their opponent, no matter how deep into the playoffs they were. They made the other team's size and physicality a disadvantage. And soon enough, certainly after the Penguins won not just one, but two championships by doing that, the league caught on. And as leagues will do, they copycat it all across. Uh, That happens in the NFL, Major League Baseball, everywhere. There's not many original ideas. It was to the Penguins' considerable credit at the time that they zagged when everybody else was zigging. And zigging meant 
being the big bad teams out of the West, like the Blackhawks and the Kings and a few others. And as long as I've mentioned football, I can I can just go right ahead and point out that there's probably no sport quite like football in this zigging and zagging regard because you'll get to the stage where it's all passing, everybody's passing, no one ever hands the ball off, running backs get devalued. Next thing you know, somebody says, hey, look at all these small defenders out there on the field. I'm just going to run all over them. I'm going to line up massive bodies in a bunch of running backs and trample them. Which, by the way, if you don't follow the local franchise, the Steelers are planning to do this season. So I'll come back to it. Why wouldn't a team, meaning anywhere in the NHL, just say, you know what? We're going to, we're just going to break all of the ongoing molds right now. We're going to load up with people who can skate. You have to skate no matter what in 2024. That's the way the game is designed, and you have to be able to score. But we're going to value size over speed. We're going to do that, or at least as much as is realistic within the framework of more penalties being called than they were in the past, more emphasis on cutting down uh, obstruction and clutching and grabbing and so forth. You, You can't pretend just because you want to that it's 20, 30 years ago. A big player is going to go sit if they can't keep up. So maybe just a couple lines. Maybe just a couple of lines up front and a third defense pairing. But what you do is you create a different atmosphere for your team and, more importantly in this case, for your opponent. They now understand that that 50-50 puck can be won a different way. It doesn't just have to be Eliash Pedersen skating over there a millisecond before you and then, you know, zipping around in a real tight 180. It can be somebody just burying you and then skating away with the puck at their pleasure. Someone, mark my words, and it's not the Panthers. It really isn't. The Panthers aren't that team. Uh, they show pieces of it. They're, they're more mean and nasty and... uh What's the word I'm looking for here? I think feisty. They're, they, they're, they, they're like that annoying kid on the playground that always is picking a fight for absolutely no reason. But they aren't, you know, the the, the big tough team or whatever. They don't they don't impose on anybody that way. Someone's gonna do it, and no one, no one in the sport, at least for a year or two, is gonna be able to counter it. It will not happen in Pittsburgh, but it will happen somewhere. When we come back, J1Q. Today's J1Q comes from Evan, who says, Hey, DK, I happen to be an aspiring 6'3", 210-pound physical defenseman looking to make my mark in the National Hockey League, and I want to make sure that scouts, GMs, and coaches know what I'm about the moment they look at my penalty minutes column on the stat line. But there's something I'm struggling with. Can you help me understand how I can earn an elbowing major? Do they even exist? You know, Evan, Jacob Truba got a uh, was it a five thousand dollar fine? Five thousand dollar fine, which is a millifraction of his salary, which has no impact at all on anything related to his hockey playing, his hockey career, uh, his life, let alone what you would want to see from a changing the behavior standpoint. It doesn't even really go on his ledger. In other words, the next time they, at the uh, the hilariously named Department of Player Safety, go to review one of his cheap shots, and they get the opportunity at least once a month, they can still keep saying, yeah, but, you know, he's clean from the suspension standpoint, or he's, you know, and, and it's, it's, it's the subject of, is so stomach turning that I that I have a hard time even taking it on anymore. There's a feeling now. This came out the day after the hit, and, and it always takes the New Yorkers about 
24 plus hours to start mounting any kind of a defense for Truba because if, if you're being real here, I mean, you know that the guy is absolute scum as it comes to his hockey playing approach. And you don't have a defense for it, but you wait, you wait, you wait, and then one person finds one angle of the hit that looks like Evan Rodriguez took a spill and it looks like, well, it looks like he, he got the neck and not the head and uh, another nonsense like that. And it was okay to have it be a minor penalty and not a major because he really didn't make the full contact. I'm going to remind everybody as I did a month ago in a tweet on social media that really, really went viral and ended up causing all kinds of discussion, uh, both nationally and in Canada, that a major penalty in the NHL rulebook can be enforced based on, and I'm quoting it directly here, attempt to injure, and there's another reference to intent to injure, which mean the same thing. If you lead a hit with your elbow swinging at an individual's head or, gasp, try diving into a player, as happened to Martin Natchez of the Hurricanes, and you miss him, but your elbow is first while you're supermanning into the glass, that is an intent slash attempt to injure. It's right There in the rule book, I had a former NHL referee, Tim Peel, respond to me and respond on that same social forum as saying he understood what I was getting at. He understood that I read the rule correctly, but he questioned and and not in a, you know, nasty or, or cynical way, but he questioned whether or not officials or even the league Look at the rules wording, you know, the way it's worded. But, but Tim, it says that, you know, it's right there in the book. It's right there. If it shouldn't be there, take it out. Okay. If no one's going to abide by it or they're just going to say, yeah, but that's not what it really means. Take it out because there's no way that I or anybody else could misinterpret the words intent or attempt. When Truba leads with his elbow, which he unquestionably does, nobody could dispute that. Truba's mom couldn't dispute it. When he leads with the elbow, and it is at the height of Rodriguez's head, there's, there's only one place to go with that. He's trying to hurt the player, and he's trying to hurt him in a non-hockey way. There's nothing hockey-oriented about that play, about that attempt slash intent on that play. I am so, so, so weary of this, this thing. Can you imagine how gross it would be if that individual ends up holding the Stanley Cup in the air? Something to think about when you watch Game 4 of that series tonight. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everybody listening to Daily Shot of Penguins. We're going to do another one of these tomorrow. 